Now, one thing that is very important here is uh, it's very important you get a nice HDR if you're going to light up your ocean. Actually, you should have a nice collection of HDRs regardless, you know, whatever. But if you're doing like water or, uh, you know, cars or anything metallic or reflective, you should have a good HDR. Like it, it won't look good otherwise. Trying to just do a, trying to do like a daylight system is fine, but it doesn't look that good. So this is the one I'm using. I won't uh, put in the HDR with the file. I'll put in this link. So I'll put the link in the description below the video in on YouTube and Vimeo. So you can download this one from there. So you get, uh, they're all free and you get everything from like 1K all the way to 16K. I'm using the 1K, like it doesn't make a difference. It's just for reflections and for lighting also, but the 1K is good enough. Okay, so just to get started, I have built a few shaders, okay, which are just uh, like, uh, there's one for the floor, which is below, okay, and then uh, the border of the life boy, the teapot, the rope, these are just single colors. Okay, I'll do a render right now, so you'll be able to see it. This is the original ocean shader that I have, but I'm keeping this, you can take a look at it later, but we'll build a brand new. So I have like a blank ocean shader as well. And uh, I have set up my render as well. So uh, I've kept it to 64 by 1024 because I was doing a, doing like depth of field, but I'll bring it down for now. And uh, yeah, there's no global illumination. I'm not using any. And I've gotten the reflection refraction down to two. You don't need more than that, like not for this. Because it's just a single plane, you know, so you don't really need anything else. And what else? So that's, yeah, so that's basically it. So yeah, I've also specified a specific resolution, but I'll get it about three fourth. Okay, so let me just hit a render view and uh, we'll see what we have. So I can't see anything right now because uh, like I have this one light, but I've turned it off. Okay, this has the HDR. So let's start off by putting like an RS light dome and I will just load up that HDR. Okay, so I have this, which is the Sunrise HDR. Yeah, so it's called Umlanga Sunrise. Okay, so you can download it from the website. Okay, and let's hit render and we'll see what we have. And there you go. This is basically what we have. So what I want to do is I just want to rotate it so the sunlight is in this direction and my camera has depth of field. Let me turn that off. Yeah, okay. So let me just take this and rotate it so I can get it from, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is a really nice HDR. Like you get very nice reflections. I think I also have photographic exposure, which I have, yeah, I've jumped up the saturation. So I'll just, you know, bring that down to one. Okay, so this is my basic lighting. You don't really need to do anything beyond this. Like this is good enough. And let me just try to bring that a little bit. Yeah, I think this is good. I want something that will like show the ocean and the teapot. Like I want the life boy to be a little visible. Okay, so the basic ocean shader isn't particularly complex. Okay, so building up the shader. So the basic ocean shader isn't very difficult. Okay, we essentially build up uh, the ocean shader based on glass or water. So if you want, you can start off with a, with with a preset, but we'll just build it up, you know, manually. So I'm going to take the diffuse weight and make it zero. So there you go. And you get like nice reflections. And uh, I think there's a small bug with my setup because I can't see the, you know, the exposure and the bloom and glare stuff. Even though I am on almost the latest version, like I'm on 2.6.28, I think something must have gone wrong. I'll reinstall it and see if it comes up. Okay, so anyways, that's not really important. And once you've get gotten the diffuse to zero, get the refraction value to one. And there you go. So once you've done that much, what we want to do is come to the uh, transmittance color and make this slightly bluish, like a bluish green is where you want to be. And then just increase the absorption scale to about four, but yeah, push it more towards green. Like this is not what we want. 
yeah don't keep it to full 255 like don't keep the value to one like get it slightly lower now this is where the ground plane below the ocean is is required because what happens is if i hide the grid you can see like it all just becomes black okay like you get a little bit of transparency there right like if you just zoom into the to the teapot so you'll get a little bit of transparency here but the ocean itself kind of loses depth now which is fine because the ocean is generally very deep but if you're doing a more artistic thing then if you want to be able to like you know get a little bit of depth variation that grid helps so if i turn on the grid see so you're getting like wherever it is getting shallower because wherever it's getting closer to the grid you can see the color becomes lighter and then at the peaks it becomes darker so it gives you that variation much more easily than by not having a grid down there and the other interesting thing you can do is on that grid which is the floor material if i change the color i can additionally affect the color of the ocean okay so if i just take this and i just sort of you know like make it you know green or blue or whatever see like or if i make it pink so I'm additionally sort of multiplying into the color of the ocean. So whatever you want, you can sort of play around a little bit more. If you feel like it's too light, you want it darker. So you can just, you know, sort of adjust those colors as well. Okay, so this is the basic. Yeah, let's let's just see how much how much is it? It's four, right? Let's get to five. Yeah, I think five is good enough. Okay, the second thing we want to do is uh we want to generate like white caps, which is essentially uh, like we want the peaks to be more solid like, or have like a color to them. So that's the second thing you want to do, like when you're building an ocean shader. Okay, so this is this is fairly simple. So I'm going to take the transmission and make it black temporarily, like get the weight down to zero, get the diffuse weight back up and I'll temporarily make the reflection zero as well. So what you want is you want to take a curvature map and in the curvature map, let's connect this to diffuse color. So there you go. See, you get white caps, uh, change this to like convex AL curvature. So it's a little more controlled, lower the radius to about 0.2 and then just adjust it in the remap. So you can just like adjust the input range and adjust the, you know, the bias and the gain and lower the contrast a little bit so it sort of fades out yeah this is good okay now we take a ramp or we, we need we need two ramps okay so we need one for diffuse and we need one for uh, the transparency yeah so this goes in in here and set this to alt and connect this here to the diffuse color and what we'll do is we'll change this to like a blue shade. There you go. And this, we're going to reverse it. Okay, so wherever you have the white caps, that should be black or like a dark gray. And the rest should be white. And if I plug this into the refraction color, and now let's bring everything back. So we'll take the reflection weight back to one. See, now you can start seeing the white caps. And then we'll also get the refraction weight back to one let me just yeah you can adjust the coloring now so if i just make it brighter yeah see it's not supposed to be like very visible but it's a nice enough see there you go so you have like this slight bit of you can adjust this so like instead of like a light gray if i go darker see now i can see it yeah so there you go see you can see a little bit of the white caps we can adjust the absorption again. Let's make it about four. Yeah. Okay. And that's basically it. Like you don't, this is not a very, this is not a very complex thing to work with. Okay. So this is how you build uh, an ocean shader in Redshift. If you want to do this with Arnold, the technique will essentially be the same. You won't have to change too much. And if you want the white caps to be bigger, you can always just adjust the, uh, the curvature value. You know, so if I make this say 0 0.3, you'll get, you know, slightly bigger 
range and you can adjust the minimum value. Yeah, there you go. So you can adjust the minimum maximum depending on how much you want it to be. Okay, so this is basically it. So this is how you set up an ocean shader in, uh, in Redshift. Okay, now the nice thing is if you want, you can also export this map. Like in the evaluate, you actually have an option to export texture. So if you want to, if you've done an animation, like an ocean animation, and you want to export that as a displacement map to another software, you can always export that. And then if you're using Redshift in Maya or Max or whatever, the shader process will, uh, or the shader parameters will remain the same. So you can just follow the same technique, you know, anywhere else and you'll get the same result. All right, so that's basically it. So if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, you can ask me in the comments or um, you can ask me on Twitter, Vimeo, you know, whatever, you can send me an email. So whatever is preferable, you can use it to ask me a question. And uh, once again, I hope this was useful.